Hello and welcome to this special holiday edition of Eye on Port. It is proudly brought to you by West Blue Consulting, Ghana Oil Company Limited and Ghana Community Network Services. Proud media partner is the Business and Financial Times. People, uh, just a couple of days ago, the Ghana Free Zones Authority, in collaboration with the African Free Zones, uh, held a workshop for members of the Free Zones fraternity uh, to see how best they can carry forward the Free Zones enclaves within Ghana and Africa at large. The vision is big. Take a listen to what happened there. The Ghana Free Zones Authority, in partnership with the African Free Zones Organization, have held a day's training workshop for companies and businesses in the Free Zones Enclave and the business and economic community on managing, developing, and sustaining mainstreaming in economic zones and free zones. Chief Executive Officer of Ghana Free Zones Authority, Michael Ochiribefi, said, Ghana stands to gain immensely from the potential of free zone enclaves and economic free zones. He said economic indicators of the nation including that of exports have begun witnessing a surge as a result of attention towards free zones. A deputy minister of trade and industry Carlos Ahenkra said government of Ghana is creating opportunities for companies in the free zones including a number of outline incentives. He also revealed that Government intends to create free zone enclaves in every region of Ghana. Players within the economic zones and free zone enclaves were trained in complying with corporate social responsibilities and ensuring the attainment of the UN Sustainable Development Goals. But to what extent are free zones benefiting countries in which they are? If you take Ghana's free zones enclave, for instance, there is one in Tema uh, right here and also there is one in Takrade. There's one coming up around Buankrai in the Ashanti region and there are proposals to have about 10 of them. But to what extent are free zones benefiting the economy of the country? Uh, what is the Ghana Free Zones Authority's vision? What are they seeking to even achieve? All of that, I engage the Chief Executive Officer as well as a Director of the Tanjamed uh, Free Zones Enclave or Port Authority to see the future of Free Zones Enclave. What's yeah. going on at your area? Uh, we want to shift the paradigm from the normal way of doing things to trying to learn from the best in class. As far as Free Zones is concerned, I've told you that when we went to uh, Tanje and to visit Tanjamed, Realize that mean, in, in Morocco, it's supposed to be Morocco. Yes, we realize that going around Africa, that is the best free zones for us to model. So and why is it the best? What, because what, what's because, special about because the, um, everything is there. You know, they are they are on course, and they are very 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 organized, and they have a very good plan. I mean, trying to work out something to achieve a very good objective for the country. Because you see. It is not just about attracting investment, but also sustaining the investment and being able to create a lot of good opportunities for people, especially those who are unemployed. So you get to touch your med and you see that these guys are serious people that you have to connect with. And we believe that as Ghana Free Zones Authority, I mean, we are so privileged and honored to be part of uh, touch your med. And we want to model their successes and see what we can also bring from there to change the way we do things in Ghana, especially in the, in the field of free zones and investment promotion. So that's the vision, that's the target we yeah, want to reach. Yeah. But what's the state of our free zones now? I mean, it's doing so well. I mean, you know that when we came, prior to us coming, I mean, things were not so organized. That's what I see. But In, now, in which way? In, in all set of... Because we are looking at free zones from a very big perspective that not just only as an investment promotion agency or export-led business, but also be able to sustain business, to be able to give out what you have promised to give, not to change your mind tomorrow, and to be able to help these businesses to be in business. Because if you're able to attract a business to your country and you are not able to help the person or the business by aiding, giving certain incentives and giving other things that may not necessarily be asked. It means that you are not serious. I see it as very important for me as a regulator in Ghana to be able to do more for the free zones and enterprise. Not just attracting them, 
but being there for them, trying to help them to succeed in business. At the moment, you think that we are not doing it? We were not doing that, but now we have started doing it. So that is what we think we are, we are doing right now. And I can tell you in confidence that the state of free zones in Ghana has changed 360 degrees. Everybody can tell you how we are, we are bringing investments to the country. We are, we, are, we, are, we are turning things around. We are helping our uh, free zone, existing free zone enterprises to get new markets. These are things that we are doing. We are also we have strengthened our, our compliance regime. And how many free zone enclaves do we have in Ghana? Currently, the Ghana Free Zones um, Authority operates three different enclaves. Which one? I know of the Tema. Tema, Ishim, Ishim, Intakrade, and the Buankra one. The Buankra in, one, in, the, in, in, in the Ashanti region. region. Is, that yeah. one, is that one working? The it region? just about started. Okay, because we have, started we have signed in one brewery company. That's about starting work early next year. Okay. We signed in the company just last month. And uh, they are just about taking off okay, in that so, area. So all in all, you have about three enclaves. Three working. What, what but we have, picture? What but we have, other, have? we have other single factories all across the country. Because when you go to um, the country, you know, Ghana Free Zone, we are operating the two-tier system of free zones. The strictly enclave system where some of the free zones companies are located in one particular place. We call export processing zone or special economic zone. And also some of the companies are outside the enclave. They are the single factory system, um, uh, free zones. So we have a lot of them also in the system. I, I don't know what is special about Tangemer because a lot of people are saying good stuff about you. What, what's going on in Tangemer? Benin is that that's where you work. You are you are a director there, aren't you? Initially, we started the Tangemer project through a very uh, uh, pragmatic approach with uh, um, integrations of uh, different factors that allow us today to be uh, among the top players first and allow us as well to duplicate this experience today in, uh, in the African, in the African uh, continent. So um, we are responsible for the development of the port complex, the Tangemet port complex. Tangemet port today is uh, the largest port in Africa. We are among I the see. Top, uh, yeah, we are among the top five in the EMEA region, Europe, Middle East and yeah. African regions. And uh, very soon after the opening of the second phase of the Tangier uh, of the Tangier Met Port, um, we will be among the top 20 uh, worldwide. So uh, we will be one of the main uh, global players in terms of port developments and, uh, and uh, among the top 20 ports in the whole world. 20 ports uh, by reaching the capacity of the nine million containers. And currently you are doing about 3.3 million yeah. TUs, right? Yes, absolutely. This is the existing capacity and by extending the capacity to additional 6 million uh, containers with the, the, uh, the Tangemet 2, I mean the second phase of our development, we will attend the 9 million uh, containers and then in terms of uh, container capacity, we will be, uh, we will be uh, definitely among the top 20 worldwide. So you are expanding your ports just as we are doing here in Ghana, about four times the current size. So three times its current size. Is that, is that uh, yes, it is? in terms of containers capacity. In terms yes. of container capacity. Yes. What about in, t in terms of area capacity, area size? In terms of area capacity, yes, we are also done with the size. Yeah. Now the infrastructure is almost done. The, let's say the concession is already, uh, it's already fixed. And, uh, I see. Yeah. When do you intend to open it? Early in 2019, I mean January, February are the latest. So okay. I mean the the, the container terminal will uh, will start its operation. So uh, I'm interested, and I'm asking you all of these things because in Ghana as well we have uh, ports being expanded, and by June 2019 we're going to also start the second phase of that port. Two beds will be ready by then. That's going to increase our capacity uh, very hugely. How are you linking your port expansion, what, what you have expanded, and the free zones enclave and the free zones business? Well, the, the post development is definitely connected to the economic zones and free zones development. And this is uh, one of uh, the main success factors of our policy and our, uh, and our strategy. Uh, so we have developed a total footprint of 5,000 hectares dedicated to development of free zone and economic zones uh, and economic zones development. Hosting today more than 1,000 multinational companies that are located in our free zones and they are also getting the benefits of the development of our ports, act uh, our ports activities. Today, Tangier Met Port 
is connected to more than 186 ports worldwide. Wow. We are oh. connected to almost uh, all the continents. Wow. And, um, for how many countries? For about 77 countries. Wow. Uh, but you know, this changed uh, almost everywhere. Yeah. Uh, yeah. We are very well connected to the Western African uh, region. region. And uh, more than 40% of our traffic goes to Africa. So uh, thanks to this unique geographical location that we have at the crossroad of... Uh, you have an advantage. Road. Yes, this is the geographical advantage that we have. So True. besides the, uh, the infrastructure setup, you have all what we can call, um, let's say, the market opportunity that you could offer out of the development of your economic zones and free zones. And uh, we, are, uh, we are quite successful on that because uh, Morocco has signed uh, more than 55 free trade agreements yeah. and uh, thanks to this logistic performance that we are offering as well, we offer market opportunities to, uh, to the company that are located in our zone. How do you do that? Because that's very key. Uh, it's supposed to be one of the very key incentives that if you can offer, definitely you will attract investors coming in. How do you do that? Create the market opportunities for you all. First, we are talking about the access to the market. Through the free trade agreements, those companies have access to 1.5 billion consumers today, out of Morocco and out of the free zone. So they can deal with, uh, with the customers uh, with no custom duties, with no, uh, with no extra taxes that, has, that, will, that, that will be applied and that will affect, uh, let's say, the, the pricing and the, and the, commercial, the, the commercial offers. We have invested a lot of effort in order to train our people, in order to get, uh, to, 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 to get our uh, technicians, engineers, operators uh, ready to fit to the requirements of the automotive, uh, of the, the automotive sector. sector. And this happened before the, invest, the investors came in. So, so what I gather from trade. that is that you prepared yourselves and when the opportunity came, you were able to take advantage of it. Yes. So you developed your skill set, yes. you were ready for it, and when it came, you actually took advantage of it, and now you, you are shining everywhere. That, that's what I would want to find out from Ghana. That, for instance, uh, Mr. Befi, we have a, a port that's been expanded that's supposed to be opened by just next year. Mm. Uh, are we also prepared to take advantage of that kind of huge opportunity that will be created? Have we developed the, the human skill, for instance? Mm. Because, you know, we, we're talking about, for instance, attracting uh, uh, car makers like VWU and all of that to Ghana. Are we prepared and have we created that enabling environment enough so that as soon as this opportunity comes, we can meet it? We, we said that um, because of whoever we are modeling, we are just looking at the concept they are running to be able to run something similar. So immediately that idea came when we were able to strike a deal with Volkswagen and um, Nissan and, and Sinotrack. Free Zone decided to take off immediately. So we decided to acquire a place, a land, so that we will be able to build a big place as a means of trying to train the manpower, be ready for them. We will not wait for them to come before we start preparing the grounds because the set skills must be ready before these people come so that they'll be able to get the, the I mean the, the labor around easily them. and that is what we are planning to do now so in in our plan in in our strategic plan for next year it is written down I'm not just saying it written down clearly that that's what being written down the, the, there's going to be action action that's what we're going to do next year the first priority of the Ghana Freedoms Authority is to set up an apprenticeship training center that is going to train people in because you know, whether we like it or not, that MOU and the deal with Volkswagen have been signed and closed. And so we, as a freedom's authority, is preparing ourselves, being set ready to be able to take advantage of that particular arrangement. And so we are not, we are not wasting time at all. With regards to the port, we have even asked for a certain uh, um, size and, um, of land so that we'll be able to develop a zone in the port. the port. That's the first point. And two, also to be part of the whole arrangement, whatever goes on. Because you look at Tonje Med and other, other free zone, other ports, these are interconnected. There's a lot of integration between so the so they, they want to work together. But with, in our case, we don't do that. As it seems to me that everybody is just doing his own thing. 
but I guess it is time for us to think of integrating. I, I look at the area of export, for instance, that all of us as a country will be, will be moan for a long time, that we say we need to balance this kind of trade where there is too much import and we're doing just about mm. less than 10% of export. export. In the area of export, what sort of plan do you have based on the module you are seeing for Tanger Med? Med that we can say that, let's say by next year, looking at the port expansion, the capacity that's up there, and looking at the preparation you have made, this is our target. Our export target has been increased now, because when we came, we saw that people were not exporting more. I don't know the reason, but when we did our work, we realized that, it's, I mean, whether people were not doing free zones well. I mean, free, you understand what I'm talking about? Doing free zones well means they came in with a mindset to do more export for the government to get a lot of foreign exchange to help the currency to become stronger. That is no, that was not the mentality. But well, that's what you have adapted now. We have adapted to help the free zones enterprises to do more export. And we are also trying now not to just license any company at all that want to be part of the free zones. What we have realized in the best in class in this game is that they don't just give license to any other company. Because the free zones companies are not capped, anybody with even small investment amount or initial capital can come and be granted license or be given license to a printer. We don't want to do that anymore. We want to look out for those who are in business, those who are ready to do good business, those who are ready to create more bigger opportunities for Ghanaians, those who want to help Ghana to grow. These are the people that we'll be targeting. Let, let me ask about local companies that. Uh, for instance, exporting. Uh, there have been a lot of concerns about quality, uh, meeting standards in the international market, for instance. Uh, the, the, recently there was concern about uh, chocolate, our local chocolate not doing so well when it comes to export, the, the European or the Western market. And that's because even the wrapper is not yes. all sealed up. Yes. Uh, compared to what's happening outside mm. where all the wraps, the, the mm. entire chocolate is wrapped up. Mm. How are you ensuring quality? And then maybe I will come to uh, Benice to talk to us about what their, the, their modalities are back there. The standards now is getting better. I mean, compared to sometimes. What, what has changed? Uh, because now we are being quality conscious. You know, when that thing happened, it, be, it became an embarrassment to the nation. Because but why don't we even cover the wrap? Because cocoa is our major raw material yes. our, our natural resource and so we should not get it wrong when it comes to adding value to cocoa you understand because that is what can bring us a lot of money as a country and cocoa has contributed a lot to our gdp we, you and i believe and so we should not just sit down for these things to happen that is why the ghana standard authority has been strengthened now ghana standard authority's ratings have, have gone high they are even giving serious ratings to gold refinery like companies and here to the businesses meeting the standard that is the point that that's why i'm saying that because they have been empowered they are now trying to do things right by one educating people on good standards because note that if you're an exporter you want to be in the export business the first point you have to look at i mean is quality because without quality control you cannot do the right thing or you cannot succeed in the international value chain of business because that area, it is not only your, your, your people, as in your, your nationals, your who, are going, you may market. who are going to use your product. It goes beyond. beyond your, so you have to do things right to be able to succeed in business. And Ghana Freedom's Authority, now, in our sector, we also have a quality control section that is trying also to help people to be able to meet standards. Because then, if we are there to help you, FDA will be there, Ghana State Authority will be there. All these institutions will help you to be able to meet standards because else you cannot succeed in the international business. How is Tanger Med ensuring quality and standards? Because in the European market, the standard is pretty high. How are you able to take your folks, the, the companies that operate within your enclave, through the, the right standards that they are supposed to meet out, out there? There is no other choice because you have to fit to uh, the requirements of the customers and the customers are not located in your country and not located in Africa, they are located in Europe, they are located in the US and those uh, has uh, a certain, certain level of standard that you, have, that you have to comply with. 
So all the environment setup has to be ready, up and running, and that should be sustainable in order to, uh, to, to offer a long-term vision for those companies to invest in the expertise transfer. And this was one of uh, uh, the key factors for our success and for the success of the company that are located in our zone. Today, if you want, uh, if you want to figure today, our export turnover is around seven billion US dollars. And this is yes, the seven billion US dollars is the turnover that is made by the companies that are located in our zone. What what's the benefit that Moroccan government is getting aside the seven billion? What about the area of CSR, for instance? Are the companies within the enclave given back to the community within Morocco? Absolutely. What What is the strategy of the government of Morocco? Is it that you incorporate in your contract terms with these companies uh, that kind of exchange of promise that you said, okay, when when I give you good incentives with tax rebate and all of that, I expect you to build three community schools, two hospitals. Our responsibility is to offer uh, the best environment for those companies to develop their activities and uh, to get more business and uh, to develop a long-term uh, vision for their for, 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 for the investments. And those companies also, they recognize that there is uh, Moroccan involvement in the, uh, and uh, involvement from the Moroccan top uh, authorities to support their investment settlements within our countries and their investment uh, implementations within uh, within our, 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 our zones. And uh, this is a win-win based approach. Yeah. So Each of you need to benefit fairly. Uh, 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 absolutely. So in Ghana, a lot of people will be asking, so, uh, you know, enclave, free zones enclave, assume we even have 10 of it, every region has one. What is in there for Ghanaians? How do we benefit? Often we have been chastised by the people that we don't get into a very good contract. The consideration that we give them mm. are often lower than what they give back to us. Uh, but for me, I, I think the government have benefited a lot from these companies. Because, you know, I always say that we get a lot of knowledge transfer, which is very significant in developing a country. Note that prior to the coming of Barry Calibo, which is the world leader in chocolate manufacturing, we didn't have a chocolate manufacturing company in Ghana. But now we have in the free zones area, we have almost about six chocolate companies operating in the free zones. Now, when you go to all these companies, you see a former staff of Barry Calibo working there. It means that there has been a knowledge transfer. There has been some technology transfer. This wouldn't have happened but for free zones, you understand? So, the, and we can also not quantify the transfer, I mean financially, or monetary terms. If we quantify, we may get it wrong. Look at the employment generation. Since the concept came, it has been able to create a lot of employment for people. And the employment is not only direct, but even indirect employment. Creating jobs for outgrowers, I mean, people in agribusiness and, and, and stuff like that. What about CSR? Are you able to convince some of these companies to begin to build their roads and build schools? I mean, that, that, that's, what we, that's what we do. I mean, we tell them, I mean, I know of Barry Calibo, they are doing a lot of social corporate social responsibility in the in the uh, uh, Bibiani and Nahafu area. They have a, a certain foundation working there. Even in Atakwadi Enclave, the three companies of the Enclave, or oh, four companies, of Jensa Energy, um, Dango Testament, Plots, uh, Coco, and um, Wankan. These four companies have agreed to construct an alphabet road from the the beginning of the of the, of the of the enclave to the end of it. That's and that, that would cost them about seven million dollars. And so these are things that people are benefits that fall out benefits. You see, and this become a public good. Everybody can use it. Okay. So the government is getting a lot from. For me, as a regulator, I always say that it is only those who don't ask who don't get to know. But if you you, you start the concept well and you get to know with figures, you get to see figures written down. Clearly, you can decide not to say anywhere that the concept has not brought a lot to the country. So look at it this way. The year is about to end and hooray, there is good news for the port industry because cargo traffic uh, within the ports of Ghana increased almost about 20% in the year 2018. If you are to compare that with that of the year 2017, this was revealed 
by the Director General of Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority when the entire Ports and Harbors Authority held their Thanksgiving service to say thank you to God for a successful year 2018. The Acting Director General of Ghana Ports and Harbors Authority, Michael Luguji, has revealed that cargo traffic through the ports of Ghana grew by 20% in 2018 compared to the same period in 2017. We have also seen our cargo traffic grow and the statistics indicate that we have a growth of at least 20% above that of 2018. 17, especially in cargo traffic. Addressing staff of GPHA at the Thanksgiving service to appreciate the goodness of God for successes chalked by the authority in the year 2018, he said a lot of progress have been achieved in terms of infrastructure development in both ports of Tema and Takradi. We are also making quite a lot of progress in the area of our infrastructure development projects in Tema and Takradi. A lot of progress has been made. 2019 is going to see at least some of the projects being commissioned in both for operations in Tema and, and Takradi. Michael Lukudi added that GPHA will continue to install confidence in the business community for more progress to be achieved in 2019. And whilst we are preparing to open up our infrastructure to accommodate more business, it instills a lot of confidence in the business community to sign on Ghana as their destination for imports and exports. So we trust that next year by this time, we'll be meeting with better results to present. The director of Tema Ports, Edward Kofi Ose, in his welcome address, emphasized the need for all staff of the authority to show gratitude to God for his faithfulness. And we, as GPHA, management we don't want to be the nine leopards we want to be that one that came to say thank you indeed it's great to be alive this day and for us to see the end of one year and the beginning of another year let's sing and praise the lord for he's really done wonders for us the chief imam of Tema Port, Sheikh Lebaran yeah, Salim Fubari, in his message China. highlighted the need for forgiveness as a vehicle of progress and growth. Before a good or reputable organization can achieve its aims and objectives, there must be the concept of forgiveness. The concept or concept of self-forgiveness is very fundamental and critical to our existence. In a sermon grounded on Psalm 118-7, Reverend Dr. Mary Gansa stated that it was necessary for the Lord to be on the side of GPHA in order for the authority to achieve great exploits. The Thanksgiving service brought together staff of the Port Authority as well as representatives from several other stakeholder organizations who operate in the port and maritime industry. Staff sang and danced to show appreciation to God for how far he has brought the port industry in general and the authority in particular. So thanks be to the Lord and we'll continue to pray for successful more years to come. I on Port returns after the break. Thank you all very much for your opportunity and God bless you all. Evisha Pao! Evisha Pao! This is Samantha Wendy. I am sending a purchase order from S18 Ventures International. Our policy for new supplies is two containers to start with, but you must deliver within 30 days. Don't worry at all. I'm going to get you the four containers within 30 days or less. Bye. To get his pineapple slices from his country to his clients overseas, Mr. Appiah and his representatives have to complete a number of regulatory compliance procedures. 
to various international trade stakeholders. Hey, Baba, what's going on? Get it right. Using single window, Mr. Abia has completed all his international trade procedures through one portal. He has registered his company information, applied for the necessary permit, certificates and licenses, and all that remains is for him to get a text alert for clearance and movement of goods. And that's how simple facilitating international trade could be in a single window environment. You can offer competitive services to your trading partners in China America, even here, in a simpler, faster, and cost-effective way. Single window, the only way to Ghana's economic growth is in our hands. Here's innovation from Goyle that takes you further. New Goyle Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 tubes have been expertly crafted with the latest in liquid engineering technology, highly advanced for modern engines, prolongs oil change intervals, save you fuel, clean, protect and enhance engine performance. The way engines work has become complex and Goyle has innovated to stay ahead. Expertly crafted lubricants that work excellently with all petrol and diesel engines of today. New Gold Super Synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 News. Innovation that takes you further. Goyle. Good energy. Welcome back from the Bricks to Watching Eye on Port. Next up, International Port News. Artificial intelligence and machine learning are exerting a growing influence on port operations through applications such as remote monitoring, maximizing the productivity of terminal machinery, and addressing many of the inefficiencies inherent in the maritime supply chain. Jehovi Honen, Cargo Tech Al and Analytic Architect observes that artificial intelligence is already shaping product development as forward-thinking customers increasingly view the use of machine learning technology as a prerequisite. Members of the alliance Hapak Lloyd, Ocean Network Express and Yang Ming have revamped their service network for 2019. The alliance revealed that it will deploy a fleet of more than 249 ships connecting 76 ports throughout Asia, North Europe, the Mediterranean, North America, Canada, Mexico, Central America, the Caribbean, Indian, subcontinent, the Middle East and Red Sea. I thank you all very much for your community and God bless you all. Hey, I'm I'm Schedules of vessels that are sitting in the port, those at Anchorage, those expected in the coming week, plus the Bank of Ghana exchange rates, all next on your screens.
So that's it for this week's episode of Ion Pod. It's a special Christmas holiday edition of Ion Pod, and we have to say Merry Christmas and a happy prosperous New Year to all within the port community, particularly also our sponsors, West Blue, uh, Ghana Community Network Services, as well as Ghana Oil Company Limited. Thanks a lot for watching.